Welcome to the Wisdom That Breathes channel. Across all our platforms, we try to share wisdom which is relevant and accessible to everyone. But on this particular platform, we go deeper into some of the ancient principles found within the scriptures. If you find some of the terminology difficult or inaccessible, then go over to our Keshava Swami YouTube channel where you'll be able to find other content which is perhaps more relatable. Thank you and enjoy the wisdom that breathes. And I was fortunate that from a young age I was visiting temples, holy places. And as I grew up going to temples, I had a certain conception in my mind. For me, a temple meant a place where you're silent, a place where you're serious, and a place where you're still. And, and then, then I, I came, came to, to the Hare Krishna, Krishna temple. <laughs> there was no silence because you couldn't find a bunch of people who could be louder. There was no seriousness because everyone seemed to be smiling and laughing. And definitely there was no stillness because half the time they seemed to be in the air jumping in a kirtan. And I came to one of the devotees and I said, what is this? A holy place is supposed to be silent, serious, and still. And he looked at me and he said, when you're happy, what do you do? And before I could answer, he said, when you're happy, you sing, you smile, and you dance. Therefore, he said, we have a God, Jagannath, and he's always smiling. We have another God, Krishna, and he's always dancing. And we have another God, Chaitanya, and he's always singing. And because we're followers of the God who smiles, sings, and dances, therefore, in our tradition, we always sing, smile, and dance. Because in spirituality, if you can't be happy, then what is the point? And therefore, this festival is a festival of smiling, singing, and dancing. Have you done that today? If you haven't, we're going to blacklist you. <clears throat> Jagannath is a beautiful form of God. Now in the world, people fight so much over religion. One time someone came to me and said, I don't like organized religion. I said, don't worry, you'll love us. We're completely disorganized. <laughs> but today the organization is good. But. But people don't like organized religion, they don't like God, they don't like uh, institution. But actually, who is God? Today we're remembering that God is Jagannath. Jagannath means the Lord of the universe. The first thing to realize is there's no two gods, there's one God. Whether you're Christian, Muslim, Hindu, whatever, there's one God and that one God is the Lord of the universe. We may call him different names, we may approach him through different cultures, but ultimately we're approaching that same God. And that same God, Jagannath, is originally in Jagannath Puri. But because Jagannath is the Lord of the universe, Jagannath doesn't remain simply in Jagannath Puri. Therefore, the most confidential, the most incredibly deep devotees who understand the heart of God, what they do is they take Jagannath in their heart and then they bring Jagannath all over the world. And therefore, Srila Prabhupada, when he came to America, 
Soon after beginning the Hare Krishna movement in New York, Srila Prabhupada came to San Francisco. And in San Francisco, Jagannath appeared. He appeared as a small figure in a random shop in Hay Ashbury. And when one of the devotees brought this figure back to Srila Prabhupada, not knowing what it was, Srila Prabhupada said, Jagannath has come. And this signified the revolution of Jagannath coming all over the world. And therefore, San Francisco became known as New Jagannath Puri. And from there, Jagannath went to every single city in the world. Therefore, Jagannath doesn't just stay in Jagannath Puri, but Jagannath comes to all the countries of the world. And not just that, Jagannath doesn't just stay in the temple when he comes to all these countries. What Jagannath does is he comes out of the temple. And today, Jagannath has come out to meet everyone, to meet every one of us, to meet all of those individuals who otherwise would have no opportunity to contact the spiritual energy of the Lord. And therefore, Jagannath comes out into the city. But not just that. Jagannath, when he comes out into the city and you see Jagannath, anyone sees Jagannath, then Jagannath goes into every single person's heart. So now you can understand it's a transcendental conspiracy. Because Jagannath is always expanding. He moves out of Puri and he goes into all the countries. He goes out of the temples in all the countries and he goes into the cities. But then when he comes into the cities and everyone sees him, then Jagannath goes into your heart. And therefore it said that anyone who sees Jagannath, the impression of seeing Jagannath is so strong that at the end of life, when all the images of all the things you did come up, when it comes to that image of Jagannath, it's such a strong image that it will remain. And if you're lucky, then you'll leave this world with Jagannath's image in your mind. Would you like that to happen? Keep coming to Rathiyatra. <laughs> so this is how love is expanding. Love can never be contained within one place. Love must expand. Today, I want to share with you that Jagannath represents kindness. Put your hand up here if you feel you are a kind person. Nobody. Yes, we have moments of kindness. We have moments where we feel like we want to give to others. We have moments when we're very, very selfless. We have moments when we forget about ourselves and we just try to help another person. Jagannath is the Lord of kindness. It's said that there are five things by which Jagannath is established as the most kind manifestation of God. The first one is that when you look at Jagannath, his eyes are wide open his eyes are not covered by eyelids, and his eyes never close. Jagannath is the most kind manifestation of God, because Jagannath's eyes are always open. His eyes are always open to see some good thing that someone is doing. His eyes are always open to give his merciful glance because when anyone sees the eyes of Jagannath, their life will never quite be the same. And therefore, Jagannath doesn't really go to sleep. He's always awake. 
And it's said that even the two hours in Jagannath Puri, when the temple is closed, at that time the demigods are coming to see Jagannath. And therefore, the first manifestation of Jagannath's kindness is his eyes. But not just that. We don't just want to see something nice, but we also want to eat something nice. Have you had something nice to eat today? This is Jagannath Prasad. Jagannath Maha Prasad. This is the second reason why Jagannath is the most kind deity of God. Because Jagannath can eat unlimitedly. I don't care if any of you tell me you're a foodie. Because Jagannath can eat way more than all of us put together. It's said that every single day Jagannath is having chapan bog, isn't it? 56 items. When was the last time you sat down for a meal and had 56 items? You would be finito. <laughs> Jagannath does it every day. And it's said that for hundreds of years, the flames in Jagannath's temple have never gone out because the cooks of Jagannath are constantly cooking and cooking and cooking. But what does Jagannath do? He simply glances at all of those items. He accepts them and then he gives them to all of us. And therefore, if you go to Jagannath Puri today, you can go to Anand Bazaar, the shops of bliss. And in those shops, you can purchase pots of Jagannath's Mahaprasad. And in this way, just by eating, your whole consciousness is transformed. The third reason why Jagannath is so kind is not just because of his eyes, is not just because of the prasadam, but it's because Jagannath allows anyone to serve him. Even those from backgrounds which are sometimes discriminated against, Jagannath holds no barriers. Anyone can come and serve Jagannath. In fact, if you go to Jagannath Puri, then Jagannath will even allow you to come up to him and hug him. Would you like to hug Jagannath? Yes, Jagannath allows. He allows his devotees to come very, very close. And he allows anyone and everyone to come and have the opportunity to serve him. The fourth reason why Jagannath is so kind, so kind beyond belief, is because Jagannath is very, very active. Do you know why Jagannath's eyes are very, very big? Because Jagannath is in ecstasy. Jagannath is Krishna who's in ecstasy remembering his devotees in Vrindavan. But it's said that Jagannath is such an ecstatic deity that sometimes Jagannath forgets he's a deity and he starts acting like a normal person. Jagannath is the only deity that is so ecstatic that the deity forgets. I'm a deity and I need to be still. I'm a deity, I need to be silent. And therefore, it's said that anyone who worships Jagannath, Jagannath becomes very, very active in your life. Jagannath will come and arrange many, many things because Jagannath is so intoxicated with love that he forgets, I'm a deity, relax. And the fifth reason why Jagannath is so kind is because Jagannath is the only deity of Krishna that doesn't wait for people to come and see him. But Jagannath 
is the one who makes the trip, the journey, the effort, the endeavor to go out and see all the people out of his own will, out of his own kindness, out of his own compassion and concern. Jagannath comes out on the Rathi Yatra cart. I think that deserves a high bow. So now you can begin to see why Jagannath is a very, very beautiful deity, very, very powerful. Jagannath allows anyone to come and be close to him. When Srila Prabhupada came to San Francisco and he started the Jagannath Temple, when Srila Prabhupada was going around San Francisco and he was doing different programs, so once he went into a program, and as he went into the auditorium, the hippies were on the stage, and one of them was dancing in a banana suit. He was dancing dressed as a banana. So when Srila Prabhupada came in, he said, what is the meaning of this? So the devotee said, Prabhupada, the hippies are celebrating because they've realized that when you take banana skin and you dry it under certain conditions and then you light it, when the fumes come out, if you inhale those fumes, then it's a cheap substitute for LSD. Oh Don't try this at home. So he said, Prabhupada, they're celebrating this discovery of the banana skin. So Prabhupada looked at the devotee like, I knew I was coming to a crazy place, but I wasn't quite sure how crazy. And the devotee looked at Prabhupada and said, but Prabhupada, there's good news. The hippies are donating one ton of bananas to Jagannath every single month. And then he looked at Prabhupada and he said, but the only condition is they want the banana skins back. <laughs> they ain't interested in the bananas, but they're interested in the banana skins. Prabhupada said it doesn't matter. They will get the benefit because they're serving Jagannath. So this is so beautiful. God is so kind. God is not heavy. God is not a fanatic. God is not someone who's throwing thunderbolts on you. God is not someone who's waiting to watching to see when you make a mistake. God is on your side. God is kind. God is happy. God is playful. And God wants to be involved in pastimes of love with you. And that is why Jagannath is so amazing. There was one German philosopher, his name was Friedrich Nietzsche. And he made a famous statement, he said, God is dead. But later on in his life, he made another statement. He said, I will only believe in a God who knows how to dance. If you show me a God who knows how to dance, if you show me a God who knows how to smile, if you show me a God who's very kind, who's very compassionate, who's full of charisma, charm, who's full of color and kindness, then I will maybe worship that God. So unfortunately, Frederick Nietzsche didn't come to Rathi Atra. But maybe in his next incarnation, he'll meet the God that dances. So let us remember on this day that we're very, very fortunate. Because Jagannath means God who comes in his most personal form. And when he comes out on the chariot, it's not just a formal ceremony. It's not just a formal uh, date in the calendar that we do this ritual. But understand that this is God coming out to say, 
I want to engage in past times of love with you. All you have to do is open your heart. All you have to do is open your mind. And all you have to do is have some enthusiasm and some desire and some hunger. And very, very quickly, you will be able to experience the beauty of Jagannath. Jagannath Swami Ki, Jagannath Rathiyatra Maha Mahotsava Ki, Jainitai Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bhavan. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. So we have a roaming mic, I understand. Uh, and if you have a question, if you have a comment, if you have something on this day in your heart that you'd like to share, then we have an opportunity for you to uh, ask your question. So, do we have any takers to break the ice? Yes, we have a question here. Please, if you could stand up so we could see you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Well, Hare Krishna. South Africa. My question is, today was uh, such an enthusiastic day, uh, filled with so much of uh, spiritual intensity. But my question is, do devotees suffer from spiritual dryness? And if so, how do we overcome it? From spiritual? I didn't catch it. Spiritual dryness. Dryness. Okay. So today is a wonderful day, we're singing, we're chanting, we're eating, we're feasting. But then there's the morning after, the night before. When the alarm clock goes off tomorrow, are you as inspired as you were when you were in the Jagannath Rathiyatra parade? In our journey, we go through ups and downs. Life means ups and downs. If you ever go to the hospital and they take a reading of your heart, then what will the diagram show? Up, down, up, down. If your lifeline is like this, it ain't good news. So life means ups and downs. We live in this world. There'll be obstacles, there'll be difficulties. Sometimes the problems come from the world around us. Sometimes the problems come from other people. The mother-in-law. I'm only joking. <laughs> Sometimes the problems come from our own body and mind. So we're constantly in this world bombarded with the ups and downs and the difficult problems. And therefore, some days we feel enthusiastic. Other days we feel overwhelmed. Some days we feel bored. And other days we're intrigued. And like this, we're going through a journey of ups and downs. But gradually, what happens in the spiritual journey is that these ups and downs, what they do is they ultimately are a part of our purification. You know, like sometimes you do gardening and there's a weed and a weed has grown deep into the ground. So if you want to pull that weed out, if you just try to do it like this, it will be difficult. What you have to do is you have to go like this, isn't it? And when you go like this, then eventually the weed comes out. So in the same way, we have so many attachments. We have so many material desires. We have so many uh, different things in our heart which are like an anchor, which are pinning us down to this material world. So what happens is in our spiritual journey, we go through ups and downs. But those ups and downs are very good because after some time, those ups and downs, what they do is they uproot 
all of your material desires. They uproot all of your attachments. And when you go through those ups and downs with grace, with resilience, then eventually everything is uprooted. And then you can fly in the sky. Then you don't need to be held down. Then you don't need to be uh, held back. And so, yes, we do go through ups and downs. We do, do go through periods of dryness. But it's okay. Everyone goes through that. But if you continue on, then over time something beautiful will come about. And eventually you'll find that there's no ups and downs. You're just flying. You're going higher and higher. And in the spiritual sky, there's no limits. So we want to fly in the sky. We want to fly in the heights of spiritual experience. But it requires some determination. It requires some discipline. It requires some patience. So be patient. On a day when you feel down and you feel dry, order a chocolate cake from Govinda's. <laughs> Call a friend and get them to tell you a funny joke. And then just go to the temple and dance in a kirtan, even when you don't feel like it. And when you kickstart your spiritual engine again, then you'll realize it's actually very nice. Let me keep going. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. You spoke about how God is a God of love and compassion and not of fanaticism. You know, sometimes we see this mood of fanaticism that prevails. So how do we... Um, you know, move beyond that and embrace that mood of love and compassion in our dealings. God is not fanatic, but sometimes we see the followers of God are a little fanatic. <laughs> so what do we do when we see fanatical people around us? We have to conquer their hearts by love. In my life, I realized, in my short, insignificant life, I realized you can't conquer people by arguments. You can't conquer people by logic. But you can conquer people by love, by touching their heart. The only thing more powerful than hate in the world is love. The two most powerful things in the world are love and hate. But of the two, love is more powerful. And therefore, this movement, this Krishna consciousness movement, is a revolution of love. In fact, if you look at the word revolution, within the word revolution, you find the word love. You can check it when you get home, write it down if you don't and therefore, what can we do? There are fanatical people. There are people who divide, people who create conflict, people who look down on others, people who are trying to uh, suppress, repress others. What can we do? We have to be the change we want to see in the world. We can't take the world to a higher place than what we've reached internally ourselves. So the first and foremost thing each one of us have to do is develop a heart which is full of love. And then when there are many hearts which are full of love, then in that community of love, that community of love will conquer over all the hate. And therefore, we're not going to change the world by kicking and screaming, but we're going to change the world by touching hearts. And so Srila Prabhupada, by his own example, he showed us that the Krishna Consciousness Movement is a movement of touching people's hearts. And that's what he did. 
And what was he able to do in 12 short years? He was able to touch so many hearts and spread this Hare Krishna mantra all over the world. So we wake up in the morning, we look in the mirror and we say, I'm impoverished in love. I have no love. Let me develop some love and then let that love become so overflowing that it then conquers over all the hate, all the aggressiveness, all the animosity and all the fanaticism and terrorism of the world. That's the only hope for humanity. We have time for one or two more questions if anyone would like to ask. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. My question is actually around my personal thought to philosophy. So I was having a bit of a debate with someone recently about whether a draw towards wanting to know why is sometimes distracting me from just the freedom of accepting the, the Krishna consciousness movement. So I wanted to find out as a new devotee, where should my focus be? Is it okay to be drawn towards philosophy or should I move towards what other people are telling you to do. Thank you so much. Our movement is a movement of chanting and dancing. One time we were doing a Harinam and after the Harinam someone came to me, this was in Scotland, and he said, I love you guys. You're always singing, you're always dancing, you're always happy, but don't you guys have any new songs? So I was explaining to him, we chant and dance, we sing the mantra, we don't need any upgrade, we don't need any uh, elevation, any adjustment, it's perfect the way it is. And I said, but if you want to know the science behind this mantra, then here's a book. He said, it's too simple, it's too simple. I said, take the book, it will explain everything to you. So Srila Prabhupada, when he came to this world, uh, Western world, then he brought the mantra. But he also brought the manual, which teaches you how to chant the mantra. And therefore, here today we have so many books, and we encourage all of you, the festival is not complete unless you take a book with you. Because this philosophy, this wisdom is so powerful that it can change the way you look at life. Philosophy is necessary because we need a lens through which to decode everything that happens in our life. Tomorrow you'll experience some negativity. Tomorrow you may experience a challenge. Tomorrow you may experience a relationship breakup. I'm not jinxing any of you here. I'm just telling you what you already know. Life is full of so many unexpected things. It's a roller coaster. But when you have the lens of wisdom, when you have the lens of philosophy, when you have a lens through which to decode everything that's happening, then all of those challenges, they don't affect you, but rather they empower you to go higher. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, philosophy, understanding the wisdom and seeing life through the lens of the scriptures is so important because it is this which helps us to have a steady mind. And it's this which allows us to absorb ourselves deeper in the process of chanting and Krishna consciousness. So yes, Please read the books, please understand the philosophy and please learn the art of how to not just see 
events, people and the external things of the world, but learn to have x-ray vision, learn to see what's behind it all. And that x-ray vision comes from the beautiful books of wisdom that Srila Prabhupada has written. Thank you. So we are going to finish here. We do have a question and answers tent somewhere else on this site uh, on the left. So if you have more questions, you can come there. So I wish you a very, very wonderful day. We have one more day tomorrow. So please today, when you go home, remember, Jagannath is very kind. Jagannath has a heart full of love. And Jagannath today has come out to call each one of us to have a closer relationship of love with him. So please take the opportunity and in this way, make your life more and more beautiful. Hare Krishna, thank you very much.